This is e commerce uncensored. Brought to you by Fast Forward Unlimited. We're coming to you fully loaded and exposed with all the strategies and techniques for growing your e commerce business. Hey everyone, and thanks for tuning in again for another episode of e commerce uncensored. This is episode 41. And my name is Kevin Manel, and I'm here with Jason Caruso. And today is another installment of our e-commerce marketing question and answer. So we're here with Paul Chu. Hey, Paul, how you doing, buddy? Another installment? Are we making a payment? What are we doing? I always make fun of when I say installment. I don't understand. Because I don't understand what installment is. Is it an installment? Another like, edition. Uh, another another uh, another episode. I'm sorry, episode. Yeah. Such a pain in the ass. <laughs> Please, Paul, give us our first question so we can get started. Yeah, we'll jump right into it so you guys don't bicker. All right, number one. When introducing a new product or e-commerce business, what's the best way or ways to test the market? Well, this is good timing for this one because I think that uh, it's a lot of what we've been talking about lately and we're getting started with kind of our own thing. So I think our own e-commerce store, our own e-commerce store, right? So a lot of the things correlate to this question. Yeah, it's a very interesting one. Um, I mean, you know, I guess, I guess when I'm, I'm struggling to answer this because I know in the beginning people like to shy away from buying ads, you know, because, uh, you know, they want to get their store up, they want to make it look pretty, they want to get a designer, they want to do all this other stuff. When really the first thing you should do, in my opinion, in my humble opinion, is start running ads. And right now, it, at this point in time, Facebook is the cheapest. And the most effective way to run advertising or to test different products. Um, so I would definitely say that one of the top ways is to run some ads. Yeah, I think the way we're going to start is we're actually going to pick like five products I think we decided on. And we're going to just go ahead and we're going to create landing pages for those products. And we're going to create an offer. And we're just going to create five different Facebook ads to each one of those things and see you know, which one sticks and which one we get the most success out of. Yeah. I mean, the other way to do it, um, I, first of all, you should hopefully be selling something that other people are selling already. Um, if you're not, if you have a custom product, that's cool. There's nothing wrong with that. It's just going to take a lot longer to get that out there. Um, so if you're selling something that someone else is selling or that, you know, people are buying already, you know, what, I, what I've what i always, um, well, not always, I, that's a lie, but really what I, I, like I say, I like to say is like, if you can't give it away for free, then you know you're going to have a problem trying to sell it later. So run like a free plus shipping um, campaign where you give the product away for free and all you do is ask people to pay for shipping. If you can get people doing that, you know there's interest in the product. Yeah, that's if you have a a product at that, you know, at a certain price point, right? Because you can't give, you know, if you had a product, product that's really expensive, you can't just go ahead and give it for free. But it's a good way to, you can, you can also use similar product. If you have a more expensive product, you can maybe select some smaller um, comparable product or not comparable products, but products that go along with that product to really build an audience around that other bigger product, right? All right, yeah, I mean, we, we, we did it with our um, barbecue guy. He was selling a $1,500 oven, and we created, like, a course that we gave away for free. Um, you know, one other thing you could do, just switching gears a little bit here, uh, which is not, doesn't work as well anymore, but try putting the product on Amazon. You know, they already have a marketplace there, and... Um, The problem is there's a lot of people starting businesses on Amazon or starting Amazon businesses. So it's not as effective as it used to be. But if you could put a product up there and people are buying it, there's, you know, there's a good chance that uh, that's a good way to validate um, your product. Yeah. Even before that, we talked about in our last episode, if you guys haven't listened to that, listen to that. We talked about, you know, tools you can use to uh, gauge the market in different areas and see what products are moving and selling on Amazon and other platforms like eBay and stuff like that. So if you check that out, you'll get some other uh, tools and advice on that. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Cool. All right. So for number two, uh, to kind of stick with the idea of, uh, you know, starting your own or our own like e-commerce store would be for new businesses like you guys are talking about, is it better to practice standard inventory and shipping methods or use drop shipping? 
Yeah, you know, that's a good question because that's something that obviously, you know, you have to think about when you start a business. Um, I think what you have to do first is think about what your goal is. So for our store, we're trying to keep it as automated as possible. So for us, um, drop shipping is going to be the method that we're using. Now, if you have a store where you're like, look, this is my life. I love this niche. This is what I do. Like, for example, like golf for me. Um, maybe I want to create a golf website, e-commerce website. For that, I may think a little bit differently about drop shipping because, um, you know, it's what I what I want to spend all my time doing. For us, um, the niche that we picked, which we're not going to reveal just yet, but the niche that we picked, Kevin and I both have an interest in. However, it's not something that we would probably spend all of our time doing. So for us, we want to step away, make it more um, or as automated as possible. So we're going to be doing a drop shipping model. Yeah, and we don't want to get stuck in a position where we're, uh, we have a bunch of inventory that you know we don't want to buy it first, have it stored here somewhere, which space we don't have, and then not have it sell in some way. So to drop ship for us, even to start, is the best option. Now, if you have a customized product, like not customized, but um, unique unique product that you've developed over a certain amount of years or months or whatever, yeah, that's probably a situation where you'd probably have some inventory. Uh, so you could do it that way. Or, you know, we have some clients that actually have done that, have created a product, a new product to market and are using things like uh, FBA. So they ship their product to Amazon and then Amazon, you know, drop ships it from there. So, yeah, it just it just depends. Depends on what you're selling, how big your product is, how many of them you have. Um, yeah, there's a lot of different. There's so many options out there now. It's, it's yeah. pretty awesome how you can try different things. You can use other shipment methods. So Yeah, I mean, if you have like a handmade product, you're obviously not going to drop ship it. But yeah, there's a lot of um, – you just have to figure out what your goal is. Like what's your ultimate goal for the business? Um, you know, this, this e-commerce store for us is not really our big, you know, breadwinner, so to speak. It's, and we really, really don't have plans for it to be. So drop shipping is the model that we're kind of picking. Yeah, absolutely. All right. Last but not least. All right. Hopefully this one's um, not too tricky or rather just that it's still within the uh, the field of what you guys are talking about. Cause it's a little different, but <laughs> <laughs> what exactly is user generated content and can it be used for e-commerce marketing? User generated content. Well, that's, I guess kind of like general, but yeah, I think, I think something like testimonials, those kind of things are what you're talking about. Uh, so users, visitors that come on to the site are actually creating new content for you that gets published to your site. Um, it's interesting. I was thinking like videos. I was thinking about people using the product. Yeah, I think all those are good ways. I mean, we, we use that for a lot of our clients. The you know We request uh, customers to send us videos about for them using the product or, like I said, reviews. I was just actually... The reason why that came up, the reviews came to my head right away is because I was just using Yapo. And actually, that's one of the categories, user-generated content that you can, that's like one of the sections that you use to customize the website because it has a widget that displays that content on your website. So yeah. that can be automated, which is nice. Yeah, and you know, if I guess the, the main point of that, whether it's video or reviews or whatever it is, people using your product, it's always it's always more powerful for other people to sell your product. I mean, like everybody, I mean, we, we have this, we have clients, like everyone thinks that their product is the best product. It could be just like their competitors, the identical thing, some reason or, or some thing is just a little bit different and it makes their product the best. Everybody thinks that their product is the best and customers or, um, you know, or, or people are going to buy from you. They, they like to buy things that other people are buying. That's why social media is so powerful. So I think anytime you can use your customer created um, content, it's just it's just always a much stronger selling point than if you like jump on the soapbox and say, "Hey, my product's the best," because there's about other another million other people doing the exact same thing. Yeah, I think it's very important. It's a big piece of uh, a yeah. I mean, it's marketing like strategy. It's, it's like if somebody you know, recommends our studio, mm -hmm. right? It's just, it's just, it's just more powerful than us knocking at their door and saying, Hey, come work for us. So 
Yeah, I mean, I, I think you. It's funny. I think it's fun. we had a client here earlier, and they seem to do like we could we could go knock down their door and tell them that they need to do this, 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 and this, and it always always takes an outside source to like knock them on the side of the head and decide to do things. You know what I mean? It just it takes that little extra from somebody outside because. A lot of times they just think you're trying to get money from them. But if they hear it from somebody else, they hear it from a friend, they hear it on social media, they see the testimonial, it just kind of pushes them in that direction, which is helpful. Yeah. I mean, I think part of the problem with that as well is um, most companies are just trying to take money from people, you know? And then when they come across like people like us who, you know, we want the money too. I mean, <laughs> obviously, but the point is, is like we're... We care a little bit too much, and that's that's really our down. Well, Kevin definitely cares, that's, much. Yeah, well. and that's that's kind of like our downfall, I think. <laughs> but the that's, downfall to care too much. Yeah, it really well, is. It's true. It I is. mean, I really want to help people with our services, right? And they think you you're not just, so much. You just want no. To take I, this money. I just want and their Paul money. too. Paul just wants to take right. people's money, right? <laughs> but yeah, I mean, so yeah, that's that's definitely something I think that is um, powerful. Oh, that's and, great. I mean, it's so difficult to create content in general for your website. It's really, it's a time consuming thing. So anytime you can have your customers do it, it's, it's great. It's like, there's no, it's a win-win scenario. Yeah. And that's a good point. You know, time, you know, uh, you only can do so much. You only can create so much. And if people, other people are contributing, you always want to leverage that. I mean, we, we always leverage, like we, you know, much rather someone else, Tell, say the product's great um, because people can relate to those sort of situations. Cool. So is that it, Paulie Chu? That's all I got. Well, that's awesome, Paul. I'm glad uh, you didn't even, I was going to actually talk to you about like sticking with that starting up business theme. I tried to stick with the theme. So. Well, you guys were talking to me a little about it earlier, so. So that's cool. I'm glad you did that. So anyway, thanks, Paul. Sure thing. You got it. Now get out of here. Uh, this has been episode <laughs> uh, 41 of E-Commerce Uncensored. You guys can, as always, check out the podcast notes at ecommerceuncensored.com. And once again, if you guys are enjoying what you hear and you uh, are getting a lot of value out of this stuff, please head over to iTunes and... I want to just say something about that. So <laughs> we get people emailing us, very nice people. We ask for reviews from you guys. And we got two. We got two reviews. But I keep getting emails from people that tell us how, how much they love our show. Like, then just just please, just go give us a review because it's helpful. Yeah, Because really we're going to stop doing this if you, you know, we don't think anybody gives a damn. So, <laughs> you know. That's a threat. That's a threat. <laughs> anyway, thank you guys so much once again. And we'll uh, talk to you guys soon. Later. Bye.